Hello again and welcome. Just a landscape shot of the system, or displays part of the system with the lighting at the top, AI primes, HDs. Gave a bit of a clean out this morning, wiped the diatoms off of the back glass, cleaned the side glasses, front glass. Didn't have to do much on the <laughs> on the sand bed, the goby's doing a good job there. He's now getting out and about all over the tank, which is very, very nice going from end to end, although still predominantly to the right hand side, but he does excursions out to the, the other side. The two clownfish, which you can't quite see at the moment, are swimming from side to side at the back, and then they go over to the left hand side and come over to the front and back. I put half a, a block of frozen food in this morning and the clownfish were straight up for it. The Orchid Dotty back also fed the goby, grabbed whatever he can, which is nice as well. I didn't see the wrasse feed this morning, so I will be watching for that uh, tonight. I might put a little bit of um, mastic in and allow the corals to have a feed because they've not been fed for a few days, the corals. I've also moved one of the clove polyps now off of the sand bed. It's been sitting there for a few days just acclimatising just up to the right hand side of that goniopora on the top. Here you can just see the two clownfish just moved over to the left as they go through the, the archway there. And the, call it an orange head cleaner rat. Utterly beautiful, it truly is utterly beautiful. Going along the back again. He comes out, he comes right up to the glass to have a look. He's not frightened anymore. So he's settling in very, very nicely. Henry Cooper, the boxing shrimp, comes out particularly in the night time again, like the fire shrimp. The cleaner shrimp, which again is in the archway, halfway up on the left you might be able to see his whiskers. He seems to be spending most of his time there now, that looks like that might be his cleaning station. I also moved over the blastoma, just off of Wembley Stadium, that's the flat rock with the two hammer corals on, on the right hand side I just moved him over and just slid him off there and he sits there very very nicely. I had to disturb unfortunately um, one of the blue-legged crabs but he's been cleaning up that frag plug very well. All nice. I turned the pulsing xenia bottom left hand corner around so that it's now just at a slightly different angle. Again he's now sitting on his own rock uh, as per the guidance from Mile High Reefer so shout out to I think it's Scott Anderson at Mile High Reefer because he likes zinnias. I like zinnias too, but I don't want them to overtake the tank. Goniopora is doing well. They're now glued in place, both of them. The one on the left in particular is, is the larger of the two that we bought. They were very similar size, but the, the one on the left was slightly larger. And my word, he is even larger now. He's really opening out. Uh, the one on the top is slightly larger. He, the one on the top is probably slightly larger than the uh, the large one in the tank when we saw it, so it also is doing very well, opening out very nicely there. And it also looks like the clove polyp just to the right is opening up a lot as well now, which is great because it hasn't got quite so much um, strength of flow as it is on the bottom. I've also moved the nozzle in the, the one of the recycling pumps on the right hand side, which is just to the left of the return nozzle. I've moved that so it points more to the right as we look so that there's more flow into the tank over to the right rather than across where the clove is anyway just to quieten the flow down just a little bit there. But again with the nozzles as I have said before they are random flow so no matter which way I point them they will still um, give a random shot here and there within that general direction which is all good, all good. The two hammer corals sitting on Wembley Stadium uh, both opening up very nicely. The one on the left, it's a two-headed one, um, was giving out, it looked like a scarf of brown uh, filament stuff coming out. It looks like, well, what can you say? Silk, brown silk. I assume that's its, its own detritus going to the toilet. Uh, it, both heads did that separately. Um, none of the fish wanted to eat it when it came off and it just floated away very nice. So uh, I'm assuming at the moment at least that that's again a good sign particularly as today the both 
hammer corals are opening even more now than they were before. I will have to move them. Uh, the right hand hammer coral at the moment is too close to the rock at the back. It is actually touching, the plate is touching it. And I had to do that because the flow through there just kept knocking it over because those frags are on little legs, not just one post that I could have cut off, but there are I think three three little legs underneath. So I'm like a little table, a little tripod table. Nice idea. But with me sitting them there I can't they can't actually get them to grip so I don't have to cut those off at some time. But I don't want to do that until I've also purchased a frog spawn and maybe another possibly two frog spawn and maybe another hammer, I'm not sure, but that area there is going to be sort of the hammer frog spawn garden. And I also want one torch at some time, but uh, I don't want effectively just a green torch. I want something that looks a little bit more special because I only probably want one maximum two torches in there. I've got a couple of ideas of places for them to go. So we will see. I've also turned the, the Zoa garden upside down now, so it's uh, <laughs> not quite blocking one of the gobies' holes. He can still get in there quite nicely. He did inspect everything as I was doing it. <laughs> he was making sure that he could still get into his home. But I just turned it over now to encourage the, the polyps at the top to grow onto the rock in that area, as well as hopefully go down. And it also looks like on that rock with the Zoa, there's a little bit of orange on the bottom left-hand side. That looks like a bit of sponge to me. And if that is a bit of sponge and it does survive, well, great, because I like a bit of sponge in there. Acan top right-hand side under the Starship Enterprise rock, on the right-hand side at the top, um, still sitting there. Uh, I'm just going to leave him there for a little while until I, I decide where he's got to go. He's not a particularly fantastic coloured one, but for the price of it, and I do need some spaces to fill up in there, he may end up somewhere else, uh, but we will see. Otherwise everything is absolutely fine. The Reef Skimmer 600 skimmer is doing very well now. It's pulling out skim 8, which is nice. The Chato is, I think, keeping the nitrates down because I have been feeding much more overall that needs to be fed in there, mainly to get the, the bacteria moving. And uh, I tested everything this morning. Zero nitrite, zero ammonia, and I'm only back to, I think it was two on the nitrate scale with the zero last week when I put the Chato in. So that's now just doing its job there as well. So I think everything as things stand at the moment is, is nice because I did put five fish all in in one go, which is quite a load in one shot. But given that I'd spent virtually two weeks with Dr. Tim's bacteria in there, feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. So it had a lot of uh, chances to actually grow the bacteria in there. So when I did put fish in, but I'm not going to be putting any fish in for a little while now anyway, so that will give the, uh, the bio load chance to readjust. So everything is looking good. The, the orchid dotty back in there, utterly gorgeous little creature, it's just over an inch long, and it goes into all the tiniest of holes within the rocks, right deep into a hole and then will reappear or it even finds another way out and it comes out the back and just suddenly it's gone can't find it has it got stuck and then it just reappears beautiful little thing very 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 happy with things as they are at the moment and there are the two clams you can see them on the left hand side there generally they stay very close together they part on the odd occasion for a couple of minutes and then they're back together again so they're, they're doing well they're happy i believe everything in there is happy at the moment the uh, snail's eggs two lots you can actually see them on the front glass a little bit better now, immediately above the right-hand side goniopora at the top. If you look right at the top helmet, you just might see, it looks like a grey smudge, but they're there. And also on the back, just above, on the left-hand side of the recycling pump, number one, which is the one on the left, just above there, there's another grey splodge. And that again is loads and loads of Nasaria snail eggs. So we'll see what happens there. When I do feed, uh, mysis and brine shrimp etc at the moment some of the Nasari snails make, a, make themselves known and pop out I don't think they've actually found anything as such yet so we'll see how how they're going to do uh, the last thing I want to see is them starve and die it's the very last thing I want to see but they seem to just go into the sand and bury themselves and they'll come out when they're ready I suppose all part of the game
thank you very much. I hope you have found it interesting. And see you on the next one.